37 on the numbers. 37 on the numbers. Ready? When you do! There's a modern day plague sweeping across the state of Missouri. It's called Tiger Fever. The symptom of fanatical devotion to the Tigers of Old Mizzou. The University of Missouri football program achieved national prominence in 1978 with startling upsets over Notre Dame and Nebraska. When the Tigers downed LSU in the Liberty Bowl, veteran football observers smiled. Missouri was for real. But none of this came as a surprise to new head coach Warren Powers and the fans at Old Mizzou. They knew they had a winner, and so did the other schools in the powerful Big Eight Conference. Missouri was a force to be reckoned with. When 1979 rolled around, the team was ready, and so were the fans. They were turned on in Tiger Town. Mizzou football, Tiger Town Turn On, is brought to you by Citizen Savings Association of Missouri. The Tigers opened their 79 season at home against the Aztecs of San Diego State under a bright autumn sun. Though the two teams had never met, the Missouri players were well aware of the upcoming chapter. They came in with a real high-powered throwing offense. And, you know, we hadn't been tested at all yet. It was our first game, and I think we pretty well shut them down. I think they threw seven interceptions, what have you. And that really turned the game around for us. Junior free safety Eric Wright and defensive back Bill Whitaker, number 30, each intercepted three passes to tie the school record held by Roger Weir. But as the first half was drawing to a close, head coach Warren Powers was worried. His team was down 13-0 and couldn't seem to get rolling. Though the crowd was enjoying the halftime performance of Marching Mizzou and the Golden Girls, the real show was yet to come. Running back Gary Ellis took a short pass in the backfield and then turned on the steam. The massive senior from Columbia, Missouri, raced down the sidelines for a touchdown, and the Tigers were on their way. Quarterback Phil Bradley showed his own running prowess as he eluded tacklers for another thrilling TD run. Missouri exploded for 45 points in the second half and held San Diego scoreless. The impressive victory was a great start for the Tigers and head coach Warren Powers. The fans were ecstatic and no one was more turned on than born again cheerleader Spider Burke. Give me! Darko. Mizzou fans are a noisy bunch, and the Saturday celebrations unite the campus with an infectious atmosphere of thrills and excitement. Everyone is really involved in a big, big happy family over there at the game. It's a joint effort. Everybody gets into it. Everyone gets caught up in the spirit of Mizzou. From 8 to 80, the fans pour into Faroe Field. 
athletic director, Dave Hart, knows the importance of this fantastic support. We set all kind of records in season ticket sales. We sell close to 48,000 season tickets. We average uh, around 70,000 at each home game. The fans come, they, they wear their black and gold, they tailgate, they have fun. They make the football program at the University of Missouri part of their life. Everyone starts really getting excited, I'd say, uh, the Wednesday before. <laughs> and the town just goes crazy. And you walk into that stadium and all you see is black and gold. And the people, when you're at the game and it comes kickoff time, the fans are standing up. It's all M-I-Z, Z-O-U. Sellout crowds are a way of life in Missouri. But 1979 saw an all-time record high of over 75,000 on one occasion. Behind the scenes is a modern athletic facility complex that is second to none. Its showcase is Perot Field, the only natural turf stadium in the Big Eight Conference. The contemporary architecture of the Hearns multi-purpose athletic building and the recently expanded football locker room facility represent Missouri's continuing effort to provide their student athletes with the very best. Collegiate sports requires more than just talented athletes. Modern facilities, up-to-date equipment, and skilled training personnel are necessary components of a winning team. Missouri has met that challenge in all of its athletic programs. Mizzou's training table is another important part of the athletic program. Serving all the Missouri athletes, it provides the proper diet and nutrition to ensure good health and maximum physical development. We eat pretty good here. We get steak four times a week. And um, our facilities up here are just as good as anywhere in the nation and probably even better. Our weight room is just phenomenal. Uh, I haven't seen any better. And I worked in a weightlifting camp over the summer. And, uh, it's no comparison to our weight room up here. The praise of Wendell Ray is well-deserved. Missouri's weight training program has established a national reputation with its excellent equipment and complete conditioning regimen. We have just about everything here you could want. I have really done well in this, in this facility. I think it's helped me progress, uh, put on weight, gain a lot of strength, and uh, helped me all around with football. The Missouri system is based on a year-round program. Head coach Warren Powers believes that it offers more than just physical development. But we think weight training is a very big part of our program, not only in developing off-season strength and developing uh, size and bulk and quickness, but we also think that uh, is a great conditioning program for during the season. After practice, our full whole football team goes through a circuit training, and we feel that this maintains our muscle strength that we have developed during the off-season or during the summer. It maintains muscle tone, it keeps them quick, it keeps them agile, and uh, it makes them feel stronger. And a person that feels stronger is strong. We do a lot of quickness and agility work, a lot of strength work, which you, of course you need. Uh, we work a lot on the legs, which are vital in the, on the football field and uh, just an all-around uh, physical fitness program where uh, we're toned and ready to play when we get out on the field. The Tigers were more than ready when they met the Buffaloes of Colorado at Boulder. The memory of last year's one-point defeat was still fresh in their mind. Mizzou's defense was awesome, shutting down Colorado in the air and on the ground. An alert Eric Wright recovered a Buffalo fumble to give Mizzou excellent field position at the Colorado 41. Then quarterback Phil Bradley went to work. On a keeper, he weaved through traffic to the Colorado 27. Going to the air, he connected with freshman Andy Gibbler, who took it in for the score. The point after was good, and Missouri was ahead 10 to 7. 
late in the game, the Tigers gave Colorado a basic lesson in ball control with an eight and a half minute drive that culminated in a Ron Verrilli field goal to ice the game. Their revenge complete. The Tigers savored the sweet victory on the trip home to Columbia. What happened on last night? Yeah. You didn't go down on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to go up. Yeah. Yeah. In his second year as head coach, Warren Powers has proven that he can get the job done. With winning seasons both years, he has established himself as a leader on the gridiron and in the hearts of his players. Well, I think Warren Powers has a great rapport with his players. I think and socially and morally, he's a good person. And I think it's important that, uh, that a coach uh, exemplifies that type of an image with the student athletes. And Warren Powers exemplifies that type of image. An outstanding person. I think he's an outstanding coach. But more on the side of the person, he is someone you can relate to, someone you can talk to, someone that's, that you, demands your respect, but in the same manner is not all business. He's the type of coach to give you credit when credit is due. If he thinks you're the best, he's going to say you're the best. Well, he'll treat you just like a man. That's one of the great things about him. He won't, you know, boss you around. You just do it, you know, do what we have to do and get it done. And he, he lets you go at that. It's watching them develop, watching them uh, with success, how much enjoyment they get out of success, watching them work hard, and uh, also uh, watching them cry, you know, when they lose. How do they accept defeat? How do you accept adversity? These are the things that you learn uh, and that the young men learn in, in life is that, hey, you're going to face adversity all the time in, in athletics. You're going to be up one minute, down the next. But how do you cope with that as an individual and as a team? The Tigers would face that kind of challenge when the Cornhuskers of Nebraska came to town. The stats on the nation's number two team were awesome. Number one in the nation in rushing and Big 8 leader in total offense and points per game. But the 74,000 plus fans, the second highest home crowd in Mizzou history, knew that statistics have very little meaning on the gridiron. Nebraska drew first blood, but the Tigers came clawing back. As premier running back, James Wilder broke through for 18 yards. Bradley hit sophomore Terry Hill for 17 yards, and the Tigers would not be denied. Senior Gary Ellis went airborne for Missouri's first TD. But then the Tiger offense stalled, and Nebraska came on strong to lead 20 to six in the third quarter. Against a dominating squad like Nebraska, many teams might have folded, but not Mizzou. Bradley unleashed an aerial assault that left the Husker secondary real. On fourth and goal, he eluded a strong Nebraska rush and found Andy Gibbler all alone at the goal line. Following kickoff, the Tigers special team provided Mizzou fans with more good news. Junior Ron Fellows knocked the pigskin into the waiting arms of Orlando Pope, and it was open sailing to the end zone. With a score 20 to 18, Missouri went for two, and Bradley found tight and Tim Hornoff open in the corner. Barofield shook as Tiger fans went crazy. It was all tied up as the third quarter was winding down. Both teams battled fiercely in the fourth quarter, and Nebraska finally settled for a field goal with less than five minutes remaining. Then Missouri started down the field. Ellis took a short pass and fought his way along the sideline, but was knocked out at the elect. With three seconds on the clock, the fans waited anxiously for the call. Would the Tigers kick a field goal for the tie? No. The Tigers wanted victory. 
74,000 fans were on their feet as Bradley called the signal for one last play. But fate would not agree, and the Tigers' valiant comeback was to fall short. It was a heartbreaking loss, but Warren Powers put it in perspective. Well, there's more to college and more to life than just playing football. You're not successful. The young man that just comes to school to play football really doesn't find success on the football field because the one that finds success will find it in the classroom and on the field. The number of solutions that are required of the group will be in direct relation to... Uh, the, the academic of the performance of Missouri athletes is crucial to their development. Okay, the standards are high which, uh, and there are no exceptions. Can tell, uh, Offensive tackle Howard Richards uh, is a radio TV major and is taking a public speaking course as part of his program. Write them down and you know, just decide okay. from there. That'd probably be the best way to do it. Missouri offers a wide variety of degrees and career development programs. The academic opportunities and research facilities have established a national reputation for excellence. Established in 1839, Missouri was the first state university west of the Mississippi. Its school of journalism was the first in the nation and has received worldwide acclaim ever since. The Ionic Columns, remnants of the first UMC administration building, are a campus landmark that symbolize the tradition that links Missouri with its proud past. Their stately shadows on an autumn afternoon are part of a serene beauty that encourages outdoor socializing when classes are over for the day. Other students find the picturesque setting more conducive to study than the library or dorm. Missouri is the ideal mixture of the old and the new. It is a place where the student can grow intellectually and socially. It is the fertile soil for golden memories that will last a lifetime. Like a true champion, the Tigers came back strong after their heart-stopping game with Nebraska. The Cyclones of Iowa State were in for a long afternoon. Mizzou struck quickly with the combination of Bradley to James Wilder. Then the offensive line opened a gaping hole and Terry Hill drove in for the touchdown. Once again, the Missouri defense played with demoralizing devastation. Quarterback Phil Bradley put on a dazzling display of passing ability as he threw for 146 yards and became Missouri's all-time passing leader with 3,415 yards. One of the top success stories in the Mizzou offensive attack was number 83, Andy Giblin. The big freshman came on strong to become the Tigers' leading receiver. On the ground, Mizzou was equally successful, rushing for 240 yards. Junior Ron Fellows was a potent weapon on the flank of reverse. Walk-on place kicker Ron Barilli had a field day with field goals, kicking four to tie a school record and set up a Tiger victory. wear the proud colors of Mizzou requires hard work and plenty of sweat. But Warren Powers knows that there are other factors just as important. Football is work, but it has to be made fun, too. You can't run it like a labor camp. You have to try and make it fun. Sure, there's work there. They realize that. There's got to be work and there's got to be sweat. But there's also can be fun. And uh, life has to be fun. It's too short to take yourself too seriously. Kenny Blair would certainly agree with that. The junior split end keeps things loose with his locker room act. 
just to me. Yeah, I'm just... Flow like a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Sting like a bee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe Frazier's hands can hit what they can't see. Yeah. Now they see me, and now he won't. He think he's good, but I know he won't. They say he's good. I'm twice as nice. I'll be on, on your behind like white on rice. Mm -hmm. But there was no joking when Oklahoma came to town. The Sooners were number two in the nation on scoring offense, averaging over 37 points per game. On defense, they were equally impressive, having allowed only one touchdown in their last five outs. The row field was packed, with over 71,000 looking on, a new school record for season attendance was reached for the second year in a row. And the fans knew they would see two strong teams fight to the finish. Mizzou broke the ice with a Verrilli field goal on the Tigers' first possession. The Phil Bradley Air Show continued to thrill Missouri fans. Bradley's running prowess and aerial accuracy would give him the number one rating for total offense in the Big Eight for the second year in a row. He also would be selected Big Eight first team quarterback by both wire service. And by season's end, Phil became Mizzou's all-time career leader for total offense. Gary Ellis had his own aerial attack as he vaulted high in the end zone for a Mizzou TD. When the Sooners went to the air, they ran into a stone wall named Johnny Poe. At the half, Missouri was leading 9-7, but Oklahoma went ahead 21-9 early in the third quarter. Then the Tigers made their move. James Wilder broke loose for two long games. Though hampered by a preseason injury, the bruising junior running back still amassed the most rushing yardage for the second straight year. Gary Ellis took a Bradley pitch out for a touchdown as the Tigers zeroed in on the Sooner lead. Blocked by Kevin Sadler. And Stan Lechner sprung Phil Bradley, who set his sights on the Sooner end zone. His 68-yard touchdown dash was the longest run by a quarterback in the Big Eight in 1979 and brought Mizzou fans screaming to their feet. The Tigers were down by only two points, and the stage was set for another dramatic finish. But once again, fate would cheat Mizzou as their final comeback attempt fell short. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but the Tigers refused to give up. They came back strong in their final game to demolish Kansas 55-7 and win a bid to the Hall of Fame Bowl in December. provided the thrills, excitement, near misses, and inspiration for a talented group of Tigers to reach the heights in 1980. Fifteen of 22 starters are back. Bradley, Wilder, Richards, and Edelman head the offensive cast. Defensive ringleaders will be Ray, Benny Smith, Poe, and Eric Wright. New stars are coming on. Gibbler, Jostis, Potter, and Johnson. And coach Warren Powers will be looking for freshmen to play vital roles as they did in 79. The Powers program has produced two bowl teams in as many years, and it's going to get better. This is truly an exciting time for the Tigers of Old Missouri.